On a chill February day in 1983, a 20-year-old young woman known as Fulan Devi literally, flower goddess walked out of the forested ravines of the Chambal River Valley and handed over her gun. She bowed to images of Gandhi and the goddess Durga and surrendered herself to the chief minister and chief of police of Madhya Pradesh state in central India. The cheering crowd of 8,000 people gathered that day journalists, politicians, some 300 cops, and others from across the dry, impoverished center of the world's largest democracy knew Fulan Devi as a hero, a bandit, a murderess, and a goddess long before they saw her in the flesh. Fulan Devi, India's celebrated bandit queen, was not a woman, but a legend. Born to a low-caste household in 1963 in a village on the banks of the sacred Yamuna River in the vast north Indian state of Uttar Pradesh, Fulan Devi was, by the time of her surrender, wanted on 22 counts of murder and another 26 counts of kidnapping looting. At 31, after a decade in prison, she became the subject of a major Bollywood film, Bandit Queen, which she criticized and which, as Arundhati Roy pointed out in a two-part evisceration called The Great Indian Rape Trick, calcified a problematic version of her life into accepted fact. Four years after that, she was elected to her first term in India's parliament, the first low-caste woman to hold that distinction. In 2001, at the age of 37, while serving her second term, she was shot dead in front of her home in Delhi for still unknown reasons. Hers is not a life overburdened with hard facts. Fulan Devi's first rebellion comes at the age of 10 when she confronts an uncle and cousin who, she learns, had stolen her father's land by falsifying village land records. She publicly taunts and humiliates them. In return, she is beaten unconscious with a brick. A year later, at the insistence of the same uncle, Fulan Devi is married off to a 45-year-old widower in a distant village in exchange for a cow and bicycle. A few days later, she comes home. A year after that, she's returned to her husband, stays a few months, then comes home again. She spends her early adolescence in the village grazing the family's buffalo and takes up with the son of the village headman. She develops a reputation for promiscuity and is sent away to her sister's home in a nearby village where she and her distant cousin, Kailash, start an affair, a dalliance reportedly built on mutual flirtation and seduction. She runs off with him to be married, but he returns to his first wife not long afterward. Fulan Devi goes home. On 6 January 1979, she was arrested for stealing from the home of the same uncle who had repeatedly wronged her, the only arrest in her brief, eventful life. In retribution, the cousin who had beaten her up years before burns her father's crops. Released from prison two weeks later, she attacks the cousin with a rock. Fed up, the uncle orchestrates a kidnapping by one of the many bands of armed robbers known by outsiders as dacoits or bandits, and amongst themselves as bagis or rebels that patrolled the Chambal Valley. In her interview with Fajeli, Fulan Devi's younger sister, Choti Devi, little goddess, recalls my sister jumped from the roof to run away, but the bandits caught Shiv, my brother. Then she returned and said, Leave my brother, I will come with you. The Dakoti had been a major part of central Indian life for centuries. The deep ravines and dense forests of the Chambal Valley had been fertile ground for Dakoti for as long as anyone can remember. In the 60s and 70s, the last great flourishing of Dakoti in central India before its near eradication in the 1980s Bollywood became particularly enamored of the subject. However, the romance of Dakoti presented to city audiences bears little resemblance to Fulan Devi's experiences as a low-caste woman in a mixed-caste gang with high-caste leadership. Fulan suffered repeated rape by gang leader Babu Gujar and, most likely, 
by the rest of the gang as well. One night, gang member Bikram Singh, part of the same low malla or fisherman cast as Foolan, shoots Babu Gujar in the head, becomes the head of the gang, takes Foolan as his lover, and, at Foolan's command, forbids anyone else from touching her. This doesn't sit well with some of his fellow gang members, particularly a pair of brothers from the high Thakur caste called Lal Ram Singh and Sri Ram Singh. Bikram Singh is, by all accounts, Foolan Devi's great love. What happens next forms the crux of the Foolan Devi legend. On 13th August 1980, Lal Ram and Sri Ram Singh murder Bikram, kidnap Foolan Devi, and lock her away in a Thakur village called Behmai where they and, presumably, many others repeatedly gang rape and publicly humiliate her over the course of three weeks. She is, at this point, 17 years old. One night she manages to escape, joins a new gang, and convinces its leader to help her take revenge. On 14 February 1981, she leads the gang into Behmai, and demands that the villagers turn over the brothers. They claim never to have seen them. She has 30 men marched to an embankment and, when they still don't cooperate, orders her men to shoot. 22 of them die. She becomes the most wanted person in India, with a $10,000 prize on her head. To this day, Fajeli says, Villagers in Behmai are skeptical of anyone entering town with a camera, certain that he or she will be sympathetic to Foolan Devi whom they still view as a cold-blooded murderer. Two years later, she surrenders to the police under carefully drawn conditions. She demands that her gang members get no more than eight-year sentences, that her family members who have been jailed because of her be released, and that her own cases be tried only in special courts in Madhya Pradesh to protect her from retribution from angry Thakurs, the caste that, in effect, ran Uttar Pradesh. She spends the next 11 years in jail. In 1995, one year after her release, Fulan was invited by Dr. Ramados, founder of Patali Makkal Kachi, to participate in the conference about alcohol prohibition and women pornography. This was her first conference after her release, which began her political career in India. However, Fulan stood for election to the 11th Lok Sabha from the Mirzapur constituency in Uttar Pradesh. She contested the election as a member of the Samajwadi party of Mulayam Singh Yadav, whose government had withdrawn all cases against her and summarily released her from prison. She won the election and served as an MP during the term of the 11th Lok Sabha, 1996-98. She lost her seat in the 1998 election, but was re-elected in the 1999 election and was the sitting member of parliament for Mirzapur when she was assassinated. At 1.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time on 26 July 2001, Devi was shot dead by three masked gunmen outside of her Delhi bungalow. She was hit nine times, variously in the head, chest, shoulder and right arm. Her personal security guard, Balinder Singh, was shot in his right chest and right arm, who returned fire with a 9mm service pistol when the gunmen fled the scene in a Maruti car. They abandoned the car midway and boarded an auto rickshaw. The police recovered a Webley and Scott pistol and an improvised firearm, an IOF-32 revolver from the spot, along with nine empty and 15 live rounds from the car. Devi was taken to Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital, but was declared dead. The prime suspect, Sher Singh Rana, later surrendered to the police. Rana allegedly claimed to have murdered Devi in revenge for the upper caste men she gunned down in the Behmai massacre. In the latest ruling, on 14 August 2014, the court sentenced Rana to life in prison and a fine. By the time she dies in a pool of her own blood on a leafy street in New Delhi 18 years later, the legend of Fulan Devi, 
the avenging goddess, has already taken form.